from the organic prepper.com leaving the city here's what to look for in a new community now this is from daisy luther i'm a big fan of her work with the organic prepper and what this represents for people embracing a lifestyle based on our values based on living by ethical principles based on not contributing to the evil systems to in, in the best way that you can and so i'm seeing right now an acceleration of the shift towards living in the country towards living rurally with decentralization happening not just on a, a society-wide scale uh but in an in individual level as well people making the choices to live more by their values. It's a big part of what I do in my activism with the Garden of Freedom here, encouraging people to live more free, to live by their values, to live off grid. So to Daisy, she says, there's been an unexpected side effect of the COVID-19 pandemic. Single family homes listed for sale outside of cities are seeing multiple offers almost immediately. The mini real estate boom comes as city dwellers begin to emerge from mandatory lockdowns in places like New York City. Many residents have found that there's not enough space or freedom to suit them in their downtown apartments, particularly when a second wave of the virus appears to be likely. So this is actually a, a little uh, countervailing dynamic to what we've seen in the general real estate trends. And whether this is, you know, borne out with statistics or uh, prices remains to be seen as a trend. But certainly, as Daisy points out here, for this specific sector of the market, there is a boom. Now, where I still think you're going to find better deals and where the market is going down is going to be in rural land. And that's what we can help you with here in Juniperwood, Arizona. If you want to get hooked up with my real estate agent and you like what we're doing here and you think that this kind of rural living is right for you, I want to help you make that leap. So a couple sources she quotes here. Uh, from the New York Times between March 15 and April 28, moves from New York City to Connecticut increased 74% over the period a year ago, according to flat rate moving. Moves to New Jersey saw a 38% jump, while Long Island was up 48%. And I'm thinking, so you went from the belly of the beast to the kidney of the beast? Uh, you know, like, well, you didn't get you didn't get very far there. Like you go from from New York to Connecticut, from New York City to Long Island. Like you know, there's there's a whole other world. <laughs> if you just keep going, keep going, go west, young man. It gets better. It gets much much better. Also, suburban towns not really known for their rental stock have had huge spikes in activity, which is being driven in part by escaping New Yorkers, according to brokers in their area. So yeah, you have this problem with New Yorkers going suburban, but there's a bigger trend. So other sources suggest that the migration might not be out of the cities, but into other states or even other countries. People are not moving just because they want more space either in certain in an uncertain uncertain economic climate with the forecast that many more businesses are going to take their offices online. There's nothing holding people in expensive urban areas. After all, they may soon be able to do their jobs at any place with a good Wi-Fi connection. And I am what I am so excited about this because it represents a better way for people to live. People are going to be happier with more land, getting your feet in the dirt when you can, seeing green trees, just being able to breathe fresh mountain air every single day with birds and critters all around. Like I love this. And why 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 you have to ask why is it not like this or why do not more people live this way well it's a consolidation of wealth that happens around the federal reserve system around the central banking system around all fiat currencies that you have what is in effect a mount a fountain of money not a mountain <laughs> it's a fountain of money that leaves mountains laying around right and you have these illegitimate concentrations of wealth and power resulting from the system that create artificial incentives for people to live, asshole the belly button, as we would say in the Marines, in giant piles of people in these cities that are not natural. Yes, cities are natural, towns are natural, but 
millions of people living in giant piles packed in on each other. No, not natural. And we are getting what is essentially a, a market correction in lifestyle, in real estate, as people want to go more rural. With an investment like real estate, it's very important to make sure you're not jumping out of the fried pan or you're not jumping out of the frying pan, perhaps not into the fire, but laterally into a slightly larger frying pan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this isn't an article about creating a bug out location in the boondocks complete with a bunker. Oh, shucks. That's my plan. Uh, plenty of those exist out there on the internet. If that's what you're looking for. For the purposes of this article, we're discussing moving from a current urban location to one that is in suburbia or even more rural. And, you know, I, I use the term homestead to talk about the, the, place here. This is my homestead, but it's also the act of homesteading, of taking bare land and creating your American dream on it. And I don't want to demean the people who use the term homestead to talk about their urban backyard garden homestead, or, you know, they, they describe their home uh, even on grid as a homestead. To me, you know, is, is it a homestead if it's on grid? Ah, that's definitely not the determining factor, but you know, I, I don't want to define this in a pejorative way. I want to encourage people to live better and to live in a more conscientious way so that their lifestyle is not mindlessly contributing to so much evil of government in the world. So here's a few things you should look for when leaving the city. Think about what you want to be able to do in your new home. What is your goal when you leave the city? Do you just want more space without paying big city prices? Are you looking for a yard so the kids can play outside? Or are you planning on becoming more self-reliant due to the supply chain problems we've witnessed? Think about whether you plan to grow things like vegetables or fruit trees. Maybe you're hoping to have some backyard chickens for your own fresh egg supply. Perhaps you wanna go further than that and raise larger livestock, produce your own meat supply, whatever it is you hope to do, have a clear idea of this in mind when searching for your new location. Well, I wanna do all those things. So I got 11 acres in the mountains, where I can build whatever I want. And, and this is just, you know, I'm, I'm, this is kind of going to the extreme. I know still deserves, uh, I think, a point uh, to, of recognition in this conversation right now. What a lot of people are doing, uh, what we did in the sense of, of, of making the leap, is you buy an RV that you're comfortable living in for as long as it takes for you to build a house. And I've been living, uh, you know, in an RV first uh, the freedom trailer sitting outside right here and now the freedom bus uh, or no force one for uh, a total of six years i think it was uh two and a half with the with the trailer and, and three and a half on the bus the bus is certainly a lot easier and it's, it's pretty easy especially right now if you have decent credit to get financing for these kinds of things or if not you know get credit from someone else or through someone else um you can buy land it's really easy to finance land because uh you can't steal it, you can't lose it, and you can really only damage it so much. It's the easiest thing to finance. Um, often people with very bad credit are able to finance land with owner financing through banks. So there are other ways to make the leap. I think I stand firmly behind Daisy's point here about thinking about what you want to be able to do. Avoid communities with HOAs. Ask any prepper or wannabe homesteader, and they'll tell you that homeowners associations are the banes of their existence. HOAs are put in place to keep neighborhoods from dealing with declining property values due to a neighbor's uncut grass or noisy pets. They can have a wide variety of restrictions that could cramp in your sustainable style. Not all HOAs have all of these regulations, but it's important to note that it only takes a vote of the association to change the rules that apply to your property. Now, about HOAs, as a concept, they're great. The people are able to come together at the local community level and set rules for each other. The problem is it exists under our current rubric of government as a subsidiary unit that isn't really accountable to anybody, but the developers and the people who control the HOAs. And what you end up with is a system where you're not really owning your property if it's subject to rules from an HOA. Yeah, you sign on to an HOA voluntarily, you agree to that, but it means that you're not really buying your house. If you think about it, a homeowners association has a claim of ownership over the property in that area. You don't get to opt out. You can't just say, okay, well, my home's no longer part of your HOA. Uh, screw you. I don't want to be a part of your system. Because you signed a contract to be a part of that. And you probably don't own your house in an HOA anyway. You're probably It's probably the bank owns it. And so what you're doing is signing up as a homeowner to be part of a, 
a group of children being babysat by an HOA and banks and people have interest in your property value going up or being maintained, not you enjoying your life. Some HOAs, according to, to, to Daisy Monitor, the length of your grass, the height of your fence, whether you can have backyard chickens, what your vegetable garden, where it's allowed to be or what it's allowed to be. Banning water catchment systems. Again, this is a local government thing too. In some places, government says you can't collect rainwater because it, it, it owns the rain. Restrictions on outbuilding types and sizes, like you can't build a shed or a shack or, or even a greenhouse. Uh, whether you're allowed to hang your laundry outdoors, what percentage of your yard must be grass and what could be flower beds. I mean, it goes on and on. So her next section is check out city bylaws. Very important, different cities have different bylaws that can affect many of the same things as an HOA. Where we are here at the Garden of Freedom, unincorporated county land. We don't have to worry about any city governments messing with us. We do have to worry about the county, which is a story for another day. If anybody ever wants to uh, get us to, to talk about that. So we might do it kind of off the record as a patron only thing. Patreon.com slash Adam versus the man. Because there are some legal considerations that, that are past us that bringing up might create liabilities at this point. So um, locate a water source nearby. And, you know, great to have the backup regardless of what it is. If it's, you know, for us, we have we have wells in the area. It's too expensive for us to uh, build a well on our own property because you have to go through a, a lot of rock. I would love to have a well here, by the way. If anybody wants to sponsor a well for the Garden of Freedom or knows how to drill one out here, um, what we've been told is just that it's, it's totally out of our price range because of the amount of drilling that's required. But if we had a well here on unlimited water, I would be watering these plants like crazy. These trees would all, uh, just from the last four years, would all be two feet higher right now. We would be able to have so much more actual garden. As it is, right now, we get water delivered 2,000 gallons at a time for $90, and we are planning on setting up water collection for the entire property um, where we're going to be able to collect rain off the surface and, uh, and, and do uh, water collection services on some larger scales. Even though this is uh, it's not a desert. We get 12 and a half inches of rain per year. The cutoff is 10 inches. It is light on rain. It is still enough, however, that we can do water catchment. Look for areas with like-minded people. Well, again, I got to get a plug in for Juniper Wood Ranch. This is a great area where a lot of people are homesteading, living off grid. And it, it's, a, it's a great place not only to be left alone by your neighbors, but by government. Because here, well, Zoning inspectors have gotten their tires shot out. A lot of government agents have gotten uh, forcibly repelled from Juniper Wood Ranch. That's why I love my neighbors and I don't want uh, to live somewhere that my neighbors instead would use government against me. Here we have neighbors that will stand together to push back against government. Don't shop at the top end of your budget. One mistake that a lot of folks make is shopping at the top end of their budgets. They get the most expensive house they can possibly afford. Could be a terrible mistake. You know, uh, checking ahead. How's the internet? That was a big one here. We don't have, you know, we struggled with this for a while. There is no on-grid internet out here, of course. And so we were looking at, uh, we had a microwave internet. Um, and that's not, I put my phone in the microwave and turn it on for two minutes on popcorn and it connects to the internet. No, we had a microwave signal receiver to a tower on Mount Williams. I'm not even going to name the company because they were such a nightmare to deal with. I'm just going to basically say there's no practical internet company out here unless you're going with saddle, at least in this local area. Because what they do, they take advantage of, the, of, of their quasi-monopoly status. And they, they, they this company, I mean, uh, the, some of the horror stories I've heard, um, you know, I, you know what, I'm, 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 I'm going to name them. I, I got to to, 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 to say uh avoid them because they this company has been uh, a disaster for everyone i know here in this area and it is um i don't want to name i'm, I'm going to confirm i'm looking through my own records here uh speed connect screw this company speed connect all they do is put up terrible systems that have barely enough service to get to let your grandma check her email they take advantage of elderly people in rural areas, and uh, they, they took advantage of me with with all, all sorts of lies. I shouldn't say lies. Just uh, real. Uh, I mean, customer service so crappy. You know, it, it amounts to to dishonesty in terms of. Uh, no, don't pull it up, CJ. No, I don't want to show their logo. This is back to the fun part of the story. But out here we have 
cell phone reception with 4G service on Verizon when you're, it's funny, it's barely when you're on the upper level of my property, when you're on the lower level, it's 3G kind of hit or miss. There are some dead spots around here. But what I found is that I'm able to survive with internet through a Verizon Jetpack hotspot and uh, with 4G service with Verizon. It's not bad. Uh, but, you know, hey, I, I hate having to pay money to, uh, you know, a, a giant uh, corporation that's, you know, profiting from corporatism like Verizon. But it is it is currently the best option here, unfortunately, until we get to mesh nets, until we get to the mesh network reality. And then this, you know, Internet service thing will be irrelevant. We can put all the ISPs out of business. Check out the crime rate statistics. You know, that's another good perspective that, you know, it, it doesn't. Uh, you know, factor in directly, but uh, there are statistics and given that they are government numbers, they have to be questioned. And if you're really concerned about this, you got to ask uh, people in your neighborhood, what's the real threat? And, and when you're out here as rural as I am, you know, I've got 10 acres, it's uh, about an eighth of a mile squared. And, you know, we have a locked fence, you know, that if someone really wants to come and mess with you, they're going to be able to, but one, you can't find us from our physical address. It is a hard place to find. So, you know, that's my crime protection here is that this, I'm, I'm, I'm not worth getting, like yeah, you make yourself more trouble than you're worth. No one, uh, you know, that, that I'm aware of has ever come out here to steal anything. You know, why, why would you come out here to steal? Like, you know, and, uh, we've had neighbors um, tell us, hey, there's some, there's some kids in the area going, okay, like that's the worst you would ever have to. And even then it's, that's not really a thing out here because everybody has, no trespassing, you know, violators shot on sight sign. So it, when it said, when, when, when Daisy says, check out the crime rate statistics, um, I would say, I, I wouldn't put that as a bullet point. I would make my bullet point, do a security assessment of the situation that you're creating for yourself. Crime rate statistics might just be one small part of that. Now, I think if you're, if you're security conscious, you're going to be able to minimize your security liability in whatever situation you're in here i love it it's very low um and and my liability is negligible um i don't want to say anything you know more specific about my situation publicly about what's out here and and you know if, if, if anybody wants to visit you'll 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 see for yourself not clap not not secret just classified but you know, I love the fact that I live somewhere. I don't have to lock my car. You don't have to lock doors. It's it's not a realistic security precaution where I'm at. And in and, and most places where people do get crazy about locking doors and things like by the way, when I first got out here, um, you know, I used to be, you know, I'll I'll stop there. Um, but I've I've learned over time and experience and redoing that security assessment, what security precautions are actually useful or necessary here. Does it have the amenities you want? If not, can you adapt? Well, yeah, I wanna build, but I think that's a great, these are, these are just good basic questions. What would you look for when moving out of the city? If you're a city dweller who was thinking about moving out of the urban environment where you currently live, what are you looking for in a location? If you've made this move, what advice do you have? Share your thoughts in the comments and I support you guys going to the organic prepper.com and and being a part of this conversation and helping people make the move to a more conscientious lifestyle so this is a a really important thing for everybody to consider not you know as as libertarians uh, but as, as as free freedom loving conscious human beings who want to make the world a better place we have to challenge assumptions and premises and make sure we're not just doing things because that was the default because then whoever sets the default gets to make the decision for us. And if the default is live in a house with indoor plumbing, with uh, on-grid electricity and water and internet, and you know, no, consider the possibility. A lot of people are going to just living mobile, living on the road. And maybe right now that doesn't feel nearly as safe as having your bug out spot homestead backup. That's what we've got here at the Garden of Freedom. Please follow us at the Garden of Freedom on Instagram, the Garden of Freedom, on Facebook, thegardenoffreedom.com is our website. You can also see what we're doing here with geodesics, bigigloo.biz. Yes, CJ, thank you for getting that up. We have a great gallery of photos for the Garden of Freedom, and you can see 
um, on Instagram, all the fun stuff that we have going on here. How much more we enjoy living in the country rather than living in a city. And I encourage you to be a part of the free living revolution by living more conscientiously in every way possible. And now, especially when we see government as out of control as it is today, voting with your feet.